Michelob Ultra and Myrtle Beach Wholesaler, Southern Crown Partners Incorporated, know our consumers enjoy relaxing days on the water with Mick Ultra's crisp and refreshing taste in hand. It's important to remember to drink and boat responsibly. Choose to be or to designate a sober skipper before leaving the dock. Do it for your family and friends, your passengers, and everyone else on board. Michelob Ultra salutes all sober skippers who take the pledge. Cheers, and we'll see you on the water. In Myrtle Beach, you always go at your own pace. Lie out on the sand, lie out by the pool, go boogie boarding, go surfing, walk the boardwalk, walk the marsh walk, golf at one of 90 golf courses, mini golf at one of 50 mini golf courses, fish off a pier, fish from a chartered boat, go shopping, get drinks, eat the freshest seafood. The list is exhaustive, but the experience isn't. You can go all out or do nothing at all. How you relax is up to you. There is so much to do and explore, whether you're traveling with friends, family, or just yourself. With 60 miles of beach, you're going to find your place. If this sounds like what you need, then this is where you belong. Trilogy Outdoors. All right, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Trilogy Outdoors Radio Show. It is our privilege to be back live, coming to you through the Toyota Tundra Studio, presented by Sparks Toyota, where the dealer's always in. And by Key West Boats and Marshalls Marine of Lake City and Georgetown, where every day is a boat show. Every day. And by our good friends at Monarch Roofing. And, of course, Express Electrical Services over in Conway. And uh, we are coming to you from MIFC. That is Merle's Inlet Fishing Charters. For any of you that do not know where that is, there, there aren't many people out there that don't know where this is, I hope. But we are live. And uh, we got the whole crew together. When I say the whole crew, we are only missing Matt, Captain Matt. The River, the river Rat. River Rat. We are only missing Captain Matt the River Rat, but we got everybody else here. And uh, coming up at 9 o'clock, Captain Rayburn, Captain Coach Rayburn, will be starting his uh, final kids seminar here on the Marsh Walk. And they're going to be doing it here at MIFC. And we're going to get some of those kids maybe on the air. We're going to have some kids cool. fishing like Tony over here, the big kid. <laughs> and uh, Tommy Buchanan might be down there fishing already. But we got Captain Fred's here with Sweet Tea Charters. And Jason and Captain Chris Regan, you heard his giggle over there in the background. And, man, we've had a lot of a busy couple of weeks. Of course, y'all have had a busy summer, the two of y'all have. Yeah, it's been tough. We've had a busy couple of weeks, and uh, you guys were victims of the Internet uh, crash explosion the, yeah. last week. Yeah, that didn't turn out well. Both ways, too, going yeah. down and coming back. Yeah, if, yep. we, if we would have had a travel agent, we would have fired them. We'll put it that so way. So on your si- on, on your flight down, that was because of the weather, right? It was. Yes. Okay, that's what I thought. That was on that Monday afternoon, right? It was. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, man, but it was all worth it. Absolutely. <laughs> They've been at ICAST and what is, uh, let me make sure I can get this right, International Convention, what is it, <laughs> of uh, 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 something, it's the biggest Sport. fishing convention the biggest on the East Coast. The world, okay? that? They said the whole United States. Yeah, right? I believe it. Yeah, it I mean. is. So it is the biggest. Um, I, I could tell you, and uh, Chris can vouch for me. It they, they couldn't have picked a larger facility in the United States. I mean, to f- walk from one side of this thing to the other, I mean, is it's a two day process. You can't. It's humongous. And, and this I'm, year was bigger than last year. It was. I've never been there. Uh, for the ICAST, but I've been there for the PGA National Show. They have it there at, yeah. at the same Coliseum or same auditorium, whatever, convention center. And that's a huge place. I mean, I you, mean, you could colossal. Hit, you could hit a driver multiple times in there and not hit the other wall. And there were still multiple events because we had yeah. soccer mm-hmm. back on one side where they were playing and then the entire L shape of ICAST. Yeah. They, they had some kind of military appreciation, you know, for the Purple Heart people there. I mean, they literally had events after events. They had the uh, dance, the, the dance, scent, the candle and scent. <laughs> yeah, they had thing. a candle and scent event. I mean, there must Ooh. have been. If you put all the events together, what would you say? Right, twenty thousand people in that building. I bet probably, there was more than that. Probably more. So yeah, I don't know. more than that. Well, I know you guys got to see some really cool, cool stuff um, because this is where all the manufacturers launch everything new for the next year. That's yes. right. Yes. Um, all pretty much all of it has not been in anybody's hands except for their crew pro staff and everything else that Mm -hmm. have have used it and tested it and you know it's always fun after icast to sit with somebody that's been there and hear about their favorite product that they saw new product 
And yes, it can go from a boger grip to a trolling motor to a kayak uh, to a rod to a, a whatever. Reel. They had um, everything there. From we we all, you know, purchased. You know, these new uh, floats that you put in the pools and the beach and these water trampolines for our families. So, I mean, there's a little bit of everything from, yeah. you know, home decor to, you know, fishing stuff as well. Too. Wait, floats did what? Beach? All the boat stuff where they make the, uh, it's all the inflatable kayaks, chairs, yeah. all, all sorts of stuff like that. So, they do a big booth every year. And uh, we always walk by because it's really nothing we do. So, this year we stopped. And, of course, I think every one of us dropped, you know, $1,500 to $2,000 a piece. Holy mackerel. Yeah. That is like a floating lounge. It's got a bar all around the outside of it. It's a big floating ring. They have everything. Look at that. These are all for the pool, the beach, inflatables. That's inflatable. Yeah. Magnetic things for your drink holders. So, it's it's super thick, you know, rubber composite. Yeah. Eight PSI is all it is. You got to send me that video. I will. You got to send me that so I can show it. Well, look at that thing. So you just float in the middle of it. Your drinks sit around you, yeah. food, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Oh, that's... I, I bought pool chairs, and then they came out with a new new technology. So they sell all their cups like this. Magnet. Magnet glued on it. Doesn't spill. You can't spill your liquor you can't drink. Spill it. Makes sense. While you're yep. at the beach. So the it's like, ever. why has... Why have they not done this in a boat yet? Exactly. Why is that well, not on the that, dash? That, that's what's coming. So that was part of the new product release. Um, I got Hannah an uh, inflatable uh, paddleboard. You know, so it was, nice. Yeah. Well, it it, it you know I, I love following y'all through um, texts and everything else while y'all are down there. Y'all have a great time. Um, there are a lot of person. All the personalities show up in the mm-hmm. outdoor world. You guys got to enjoy some time with Cephas. Yeah. Who texted me and said you are missing a great time? I think that's what it said after I. <laughs> sure. after, I, after, I, uh, during, after I decoded his text During the next break I actually have He made a personal message video for you That he told me to give to you next okay. time he saw you Alright I will, I, will uh, I will check that out I love Seamus Is he not a good dude? Yeah he is, he is He is amazing He he um, he, he is great he, Wonderful storyteller He loves being around people too He loves it My man can drink some angels envy as I well. I bet he drank three quarters of a bottle. He did. Wow. And stood yeah. strong. He yeah. didn't. Stood he didn't strong. stumble. He didn't fumble. He stood strong. So. Well, so uh, I mean, this thing goes on the course of five, four to five days. Yeah. And while you're, I mean, while you're down there, you guys are obviously trying to make connections with companies and everything else. And I know in the past you had luck with Bahio. Is that mm-hmm. where you got your connection with Bahio? And then Glasses. they were actually talking about you at. Uh, just so you know, it hooked on miracles. Nice. Yeah, the nice. the the guy there was talking about you, but um, it, it's a great way to make relationships with the manufacturer. Yeah, and absolutely. You you know, Jason already has a relationship with Z Man and everything else, and Jason shared a video yesterday, and I I'm I think I shared it. I tried to. Yeah, yeah trilogy shared. It. Um, but I thought those shrimp really looked awesome. Now we're gonna have a honest opinion here from from everybody that got to see that. <laughs> Look at them turning. <laughs> But I do want to hear about this shrimp because it does. My first thought as well as Tony's was, looking at those legs, it's like, oh, my God, it looks little. It, the it looks the legs are what got me. You know, there's a lot of shrimp lures out there. They, they look similar to other ones, but I've never seen one when you dropped in a tank, which we did get to play yeah. with them a couple months ago. Um, so I did see them in a neutral environment. There wasn't a crowd. Right, that is correct. And when you dropped them in the water and those legs, we, we said quivering. That's the only word I could come up with. When you see that, I don't know if that's enough to get a fish to eat it, but it, it's something I've never seen before. Right. So, well, I like the Elastec part of it. Yeah. That they'll be really, really durable, and they will float, as yeah. y'all was talking about earlier. It'll... The, the, the main brand that we use now, you know, the, they work great. And so you're, if you're going to compete with that brand, you're, you're going to have to have something. It's going to be hard to outdo something that's already great. You know what yep. I mean? Yep, yep. I'm going to tell you one thing. I've gotten hung in two fishing lines in the last three weeks. It's bad. Fishing. It's bad out there. But you know what was on the end of both of them? I a double voodoo rig. Yeah. On both of the rod lines that we got hung on, on the boat, were double voodoo rigs. Mm, you know what that's called? 12 bucks. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 987. Yeah, yeah. 987, 987 plus 987. Yeah. Yeah, they're not, they're not, they're not cheap, dude. Yeah. But, but here's my deal. Like, I mean, I got lucky yesterday. Right now, by the way, uh, let's let everybody know. There, if you're coming to Merle's Inlet Fishing and you got a cast net you, and, and you want to spend some time throwing it, you can either 
get you a good dinner of shrimp, small creek shrimp, or you got plenty of bait, or you can just make it easy and go to Inlet Rocks or to Perry's and get plenty of shrimp right now. But uh, the shrimp are loaded up. Yes. In the inlet. I, I could tell you on my afternoon charter yesterday, I have not specifically tried to get shrimp. Yep. Um, and yesterday I went to some shrimp holes that I have not even touched since last fall. And even throwing the smallest cast net that I had on the boat, it was uh, it was very productive. And they were good size. They were, they were eating size as well. So That's good. Well, not, not like, you know, jumbos, but, I mean, they're pasta eating size. Well, so, uh, you know, we, we're setting up some stuff with PC Pond. We don't, you know, as a, as, as a whole, we don't have a partnership or really a relationship with a rod or reel manufacturer or anybody right now. Um, other than the little bit that I have with lose through Let's Fish. But so we're setting up bringing the uh, vice president of marketing and one other, I think it's their regional sales guy to town with PC Pun. P I S C I F U N, okay? PC uh, they're going to come to town, PC Pun. They're going like to come to town, hang out with us for a um, couple days, fish, and do whatever. But man, they, I, I, you know, I'm, they sent me some of their equipment. I really like it, and I've, wa- I've used it the last couple of weeks, and I've wanted to do that before I start putting it out there. Oh, this is great! Yeah, um, and, and and be honest about it. But I can't wait for you guys to see their stuff. Value wise, this this is what I'm looking at. Yeah, it's not the 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 high end, you know, two hundred and ninety, three hundred dollar stuff. But Tony's failed them. It feels like it's a hundred and fifty, hundred eighty dollar. Yes, and, and at minimum, um, and I, I just I, I can't wait to see how that aluminum Naughty X holds up. It looks great right now. Um, you know, I'm trying to run it, put it through the ringer as much as I can. Um, so much that yesterday I did not even rinse it off. I literally didn't rinse it off on purpose. Purposely, yeah. Um, so see how it holds up compared to the other one that we're I'm having a nightmare with, and Jason's having a nightmare with yes. the other company. But what did y'all see as far as that goes? I, I, we were talking about a bait caster, a no. No backlash bait caster that y'all saw. Talk about that real quick. It'll backlash. They all will. Um, it was baits. B a t e s. High quality, uh, and it's one of the first ones. They they do freshwater and saltwater, so they actually have a saltwater rated. Already comes preloaded ceramic bearings. All the internals, as far as the gears, are all brass. So, no. I'm I'm gonna order one and I'm gonna try it. <laughs> Yeah, we, we tried it, um, we, you know, it, and the, going back to the iCast, I mean, this there, there's not many opportunities where you can walk around and have interactions with the owner of a company, their top pros, and, and people are honest. Um, we went to another booth, not to get off the bait subject, but we went to another booth, and it's like, hey, you know, I got a question about a rod. This is what I want to do, and you got these people that can point you in the right direction. You can't buy anything there. Right. But they're going to point you in the right direction. So the bait thing, you know, we walked over there. We admired the craftsmanship of the reel, it, it, you know, and then – then you get to talk to the guy, and they explain, like, everything about them. And the first thing they're doing, they said, okay, put this in your hand. Go cast it. Try it out. Give us, You know, they wanted our feedback as much as, like you said, some guy that maybe is on their pro staff who's going to say all the right things because he's supposed to. You yeah. Know? Yeah, that's what we were talking about earlier. But it was a great reel. Um, probably Where are they out of? Do you all remember? Was it Texas? Texas or not Florida? I don't remember. Um. I'll say this, it's one of the lightest bait casters I've ever touched, and the effortlessness, and it could have been the rod, but the casting, it was unbelievably easy. Like, if you swung as hard as you wanted to, or you barely casted, you got maximum distance either way. It was crazy. Wow. He sat there, he, uh, no line on it. Tony, you're going to, you you would be insane. We're going to get some. They're, they're not even out yet. Yeah, they're not even on they're the They're not even out yet. yet. So, he literally, you know, unlocks like he's going to make a cast. One finger. And it was literally like it sat there free spinning for three minutes. Yeah, that's what I told Tony. Brand wow. new out of the box, obviously. Right. But three minutes that thing sat there and spun. And he'll tell you, even when we went to cast it, you know, the, the area that they gave us to cast, well, what would you say, 75 yards? I mean. Probably. Probably. And we couldn't keep it in, in the pond. I mean, we were going over the pond, over a wall. And, I mean, effortless. It was just amazing. Me and Tony were talking about it right before we got on air. He was talking about crankbait fishing. He said he could see that being hugely beneficial. Huge. You know, being able to maximize your distance on every cast, right. especially the crankbait fish. So, but when it comes to bait casters and spinning, real quick, both of y'all are, I know Chris has really been working on, you're, you're fishing more bait casters than you were five years ago, weren't you? I, I, mean, I am. I'm a, I was never a bait caster person. Right. And I like to be good at everything. So now, like the one rod that I always keep in the truck is a bait caster because bait then I'm forced to only throw that. Yep. So trying to get better, um, you know, 
I like to be well rounded. <laughs> so. Well, that's good. That that's important. Yeah. Um. So, let, let, bait wise, you, that shrimp I know was Jason's one of Jason's favorite things to see new things. What? Uh, how about you, Cam Chris? I am on this uh this glide bait kick for a re- for some reason, and I don't know why. Um, All right. So. Why you? So where in salt water you think it's going to work? You, you'd be, I think you'd be surprised. Um, larger profile baits, larger profile fish. So I, I found this one, and it's actually. I'm uh, with you. I, 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 Tony and I both agreed that that bait is something that needs to be uh-huh. in the salt water and has needed to be in the salt water. I, I, and don't, I don't need like you know a 12 inch one, but I, I found the one. And it's actually the same company that he loves their boga grips out of, but it's metal. It's all CNC. Polished aluminum, and I mean, it looks amazing. Interchangeable tails. Uh, All right. Is it going to, would it hold up to a king mackerel? I think it would. That's, okay, that's, and, and that's, that's been my big thing about it. Uh-huh. So they use them down in Florida a lot. I sat there the entire time talking with them and uh, catch giant snook on them big tarpon, all that stuff. So then it's trying to figure it out, you know, where to go with it. So. That was one of my favorite kind of lures. Um, a lot of the other ones, you know, we can debate that. And you already heard my uh, yep. So on the glide bait, for those listening that don't know, so a glide bait is basically the new, it's big artificial, started mm-hmm. about a couple years ago in bass fishing. It's gotten really popular. They're real big baits. It, it all started with uh, soft baits, like the big Huddlesons and stuff out west on, on California with these big 10, 12-inch wedge tail soft swing right. baits. And it's progressed over to plastic lures now and it uh hand carved lures it is one of the biggest markets so in I, fishing are, have they got the price down on them yet okay and i say that because matt robertson uh, who we love and 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 uh the fishes on the elite series uh matt lost one got hung up on a stump at a lake in the bass tournament <laughs> And went back with a cast net I believe and it. his live scope to find it and actually got that thing. Remember, he caught that bait. But he said it was, how much was that bait? I'm not. 900 and something dollars so or yeah. was more than that? Yeah. yeah. The ones we saw at our cast were like 250 So the yeah. ones like yeah. talking with JT when we were out there. Yep. I mean, he's got some that are $1,500. Yeah. By the time you change the hooks out, you know, add weight tape and, you know, do whatever, whatever you're going to do to it, you get almost two grand in it. Yeah, so I got video of that one. Um, JT was throwing mm-hmm. at, at Waccamaw Outfitters, and dude, to watch it move, it yeah. was crazy. And I was like, I mean, I'm I'm with you. So you know, you you guys are fishing back in the shallows a lot now these days, yeah, and, and a lot more. But if you went back there and threw that thing in a creek that didn't have a lot of mullet in it, a lot of bait in it, and you started sw- sim- sending that thing coming by a flounder, I think all yes. of it, yeah, a redfish or a trout. I mean, I can't see where they would not just devour it. That's it. It's always, you know, you're always trying to be ahead of the next step and trying to find something new that's going to catch something, catch a trophy fish or whatever, right. you know. You're not going to catch a baby flounder or a baby fish on that thing. Yep. You're going for one purpose. Well, so tournament fishing, all that stuff, who knows? Maybe there's something to it. Yep. It's, well, first off, you're not going to see a whole lot of people throwing. <laughs> yeah, a $130 lure in here. Yes. Uh, just for the fact of oyster shells and stuff like that, yeah. and, and losing it. But they downsized and went to a mid range on them now. And the six to eight inch, yeah, man, it's and that's where I'm after because I I don't have any experience on it. But well, you're matching the hatch. I think you want to match the hatch of those bigger I, mullet and I bigger manhaden. Yeah, in the creek. Yeah, yeah. All you gotta do is go back and look at the the bass and the redfish guys that when they was teaming up doing the championship stuff oh mm-hmm. you look at chris zaldane uh man <laughs> the lord <laughs> have mercy he was made he made that eight inch swim bait famous for redfish yeah i mean well, well you, you think about i mean where we live chris can you know vouch for this i mean we, we do a lot of shallow water fishing polling on the flats boats um putting charter boats in places we shouldn't but we have to have the largest number of big mullet anywhere in the world because I mean you can go in any creek at low tide. <laughs> so the question is, go in the grass. Go in the grass. It's even worse. But you know what I mean, like the stuff's eating that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, there, 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 there's not that. This isn't a you know free space for mullet to come live and never get harassed. I mean, there's stuff probably eating those eight to ten inch mullet constantly. Uh, well, yeah, like a one pound blounder. Yeah, and look like, at the pressure honestly. that we're having now. You go to a bank and there's nine guide boats lined up. 
that are 20 feet apart from each other. They're all kitchens. So it's, you have to find something that's going to separate you from everybody that puts a knocker rig with a mullet on. Y'all, I, I can't tell you, but in the last two weeks, I have gotten three messages from people from out of town that came to town fishing and talked about the amount of traffic here. It's insane. They couldn't believe it, but they talked about the fish. They could not believe that our fishery could sustain the amount of people that are here fishing. I, I will say, and, I'll and say, I will this. say this much: like as I know, we all know that it's crowded. We do. We all know it's crowded. We can complain all we want to. We, the the point in doing anything about that happened. We missed that ten years ago. Mm -hmm. It's going. I mean, we we're living with it. Yep. But they are correct. When you look at what. You know, I mean, look at Captain Chris, Captain Jason, Captain Caleb, Captain Jimmy, um, uh, all these guys, Captain Tommy, all the guys on the fish finders over there. If you look at what they're catching on a daily basis, it's amazing when you think about the number of boats that are in here fishing. Yeah, I'll make a claim and I'll let Chris put his opinion on this, but I, I think this is the best year I've ever seen. I agree with you. And it's surprise. I cannot believe because obviously we just got... Crazy like that. Jesus. I was not ready <laughs> I was for that. like, what is that? I've been well, on the boat too much. You look yep. at the rain that we just got, so it cooled the temperatures down. But look at when we were in the 88, 93 degrees. Historically. Still catching fish. Historically, the fishing should should have not been good. I yeah. mean, he saw dead low tide in the middle of the day with a southwest wind. I mean, we, we're seeing 90 degree water. Historically, you find that, guess what we're catching? Stingrays. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. You know, if you got a family of four and you just want something to pull the rod, that's fine. These fish, I mean, I, I'll make the claim and I'll debate it with anybody. I have never seen a year as consistent as this with big fish, consistent fish. Um, but you could argue, you know, the technology's better, the hooks are better, the, the you know, the skill level's better, whatever. But well, we're still in July, so give it three weeks in the middle of August. I don't think it can get any harder. I hope we say it. I hope we're saying that in August. And I, and, and I do too. All right, so we got to go to break in a minute. But I, I, this brought me to something that I wanted to bring up today. Um, so we were talking last week um, prior to Hooked on Miracles um, and the Cape Lookout Shootout Tournament. We were talking about this year versus last year just in Kings, okay, just in the King Mackerel. And, uh, you know, through the world of uh, information, um, which if you're going to King Mackerel fish and you don't have some – connection in the information world you're in trouble but it seems like there's a lot of kings being caught in georgia mm -hmm. and north florida right now big fish that supposedly should be coming this way and but we were talking about the fact that we seem to be behind i had a we had a conversation and um, last year we were in front remember we were saying we were so far forward we were so far ahead all summer long we kept saying but we seem to be behind what do y'all both think about that real quick before we go to break I had a conversation with one of the guys down there, and um, it's the same thing in Florida. Because you take our, uh, not even King Mackerel, our cobia fishery this year. I think so. What, what cobia fishery? Exactly. So everything is passing on the offshore side because our, you know, the current, everything's changing. Think about how early we had that southwest wind. Yep. So. Um, That's a valid point. I didn't think about that. Every, everything's passing on the offshore side. Our water temp got super hot really fast. Really fast. It wasn't a gradual thing. So all those fish staying out there in the cooler water. Yeah, but Chris, Chris could tell you, like we were just talking about, I mean, we were saying it's not August yet. In my opinion, it's been August since the second week of June. Yep. Oh, air temperatures? We, we, yeah. We, we got hotter quicker. Um, we got our traditional summertime winds quicker. And I, I agree. I mean, it, it almost seems to me, you know, that we are falling into that bracket of two seasons. Our near shore and we're reefs losing are our spring dead. Fall. They're dead. Yeah. Yeah, our inshore reef. I, Three mile is dead. All right. That was going to be my next question. Why are – it looks like all the fish that I'm seeing posted, like the pictures, because and, – and kudos to all the captains, not just MIFC and on the fly, but, but, but kudos to – all the captains that are really, it seems to me that there are a lot that are really trying to do their conservation job. Yes. And they are releasing a lot of fish. So you're taking pictures on the boat. And it, I've not seen any that I can recall of pictures of big flounder from the boat on the reef. There, there was none. And there I'm was, not there even. There was some. You, you really have to pick. And it's, I believe that the numbers that are all right around there where everyone congregates. There are other places that you can go.
But I think it's just like we talk about the conservation. Everyone sits there and is just, you know, eight lines dropping straight down. And those fish, I think they, I don't know if they know it, uh, if we've overfished it or what, but I don't know. All right. Well, that's a, hey, I'll tell you what, what a great first segment. I want to thank both of you guys for sitting in. Y'all welcome to stay a little longer. I saw Coach Captain Rayburn showed up. He's got a bucket full of bait and got some happy kids that will be here just shortly to join him. But we are going to go to break, Jenna, if you'll get that thing cranked up. And uh, we'll be right back on the other side. We're going to have Captain Fred and Tommy Buchanan come over here and join us. We're going to send Tony to go catch a flounder. And uh, you're listening to Trilogy Outdoors Radio Show, and we're here on the Gator 107.9. One. All right, welcome back to Trilogy Outdoors Radio Show. We're coming to you live via the Toyota Tundra Studio presented by Sparks Toyota, and we are coming to you from MIFC Merle's and the Fishing Charters here on Jason's Big Wooden Deck. And we're also brought to you by Key West Boats and Marshall's Marina, Blake City, and Georgetown, where every day is a boat show. And our good every friends day. at Monarch Roofing, Express Electrical Services, Blossman Gas, and all the other incredible sponsors, Crazy Sister Marina, Inlet Rocks, Bait and Tackle, Polly's Island Outdoors, Perry's Bait and Tackle, Perry's at the Pier. Good God, I can keep going. Anyway, <laughs> all right, so we got Coach Captain Rayburn sitting with us. And, Rayburn, let's real quick, you got some kids coming that are going to have a great time and do a little bit of uh, educational stuff here at the dock today. You're going to work with them, teach them some basic stuff, right, today? Is that what it is? Yeah, this summer what we've been doing – partnership between salt and fca which fellowship of christian athletes we bring kids in the younger kids targeting on those younger kids right that's our focus um pushing you know around ages five to eight we have some older kids that are 10 that don't know how to fish right just teaching them the basics of fishing today uh, teach them how to tie knots teach them how rigs work teach them you know how a rod and reel all work together for one common cause and then we're going to try to catch a few flounder. That's great, man. Well, it's been awesome. I, I saw some pictures. I actually shared some pictures because I didn't have any pictures of the ones you've done here at MISC, but I did have some from our partners at Waccamaw Outfitters. Yeah, Matt uh, and I, we, we we had a lot of kids, a lot of kids, and the majority of them, you know, we scholarship it. They were able to, to come for free, and we fed them, and, you know, they, they had a really good time. That's um, good. It, what we did at the marina or Waccamaw Outfitters was we brought we were fortunate the Tiger Anglers showed up. We got a lot of kids in Tiger Anglers. And to be honest with you, English, I just facilitated. Um, we got some really good bass fishermen in yep. Conway. They took and care of it for you. They pretty much did everything. I just facilitated and watched, and it was a, a joyful experience. Here I'm on an island. It's hard to get help. We don't have a lot of kids other than Russ. Right. Did fish salt um, down in this way. My mate Owen's working. He's staying busy. Um, it's just hard to get help down here. But we got to really, with your vision and, and kind of our vision, um, getting into the schools and, and trying to get more kids out. If they don't fish salt, that's fine. Just getting them out on the water. We're going we're gonna to work hard on that this year. Yeah. And now that you are retired, um, <laughs> congratulations, by the way. That's a word I'll never get to say. But yeah. since yeah. you are None retired, well, I'm still since working. you are retired, you're working harder. You'll be working harder now. Yep. Yep. Yeah, You'll be working harder. Um, It'll but, be fun. But the world is going to be a better place because you're going to end up working harder, and that is bringing these kids and introducing them to fishing. And I can't thank you enough for making the trip last week. Rayburn actually signed up and volunteered for setup for Hooked on Miracles last week. And, you know, you got to see my good friend Sarah, um, yeah. who's a – King Street girl. King Street girl. Um, Sarah had great things to say, and uh, in our group text, I made sure that everybody know knew exactly who you were because you didn't go around and introduce yourself like you should have. But I told Sarah him, I said, dude, I'm a humble guy. You crowd. know me. I was just doing my Christmas. I, service. Listen, I realize that, but I'm gonna tell you one thing. That is some great people down there. That oh, yeah. I am blessed to be on that board with those guys down there and ladies, and they are some great people, and they would completely jump behind what you do. Um, and, and so with that being said, we are, we did lay some groundwork for that, but the school thing I think is going to be big. And this wasn't me coming up with this idea. This wasn't you coming up with the idea. My reason was I had actually two teachers that said, we need y'all bringing ki our kids and teaching them fishing because there are so many parents that don't fish. Yeah. And that is how most of us was a parent or grandparent most of us got introduced to the sport Absolutely. Brad, you did an incredible job with your two but that is how we got introduced to it and so 
if we can start off little and, and, and have some after school deal where we introduce them, you know, just the basics. Teach them the basics. Teach them not time. It's the start. Teach them courtesy. Teach them safety. Teach them how to cast. Teach them how to throw a cast net, which I think is one of the biggest things out there. <laughs> um, I, I do. I think uh, start you young. Know, cast net. Start them young, and let's let's get them and, and get them introduced. And and you know, I think we'll 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 make a. I think we're going to make a lot of headway this year. Casting is the biggest thing. You know, Casting is the biggest. You get them thing. out there, and they once you learn the cast, you, you can work baits different ways. But as long as you can cast and get it out. Well, the bigger point is that you get them out, out of their t- faces, out of their telephones, mm-hmm. and that you keep them out of trouble because you, fishing and partying don't mix. Oh, or, hello, or, honey. Are you listening to the radio show this morning, honey? <laughs> I love you. I love fishing and drinking sport. But are you listening to the radio this morning? Sorry. But the kids, uh, the kids, uh, you know, it's, it's a good way to keep them – on a path of uh, a better life, and it, it, it definitely worked out with my boys. I'll tell you yeah, what. Hands down. You yeah. go hang out at a fishing tournament. I don't care if it's inshore, offshore, near shore. You look around the room at the people there, and you tell me what kind of people in general are there. Oh, good people. That tells you a lot about the sport and a lot about how it, it, it your the, the, the two, your life and, and, and fishing mesh together and – you know, you learn so many different things. And you pass on you pass on the passion of it, which is you'll be broke. You'll be broke. You'll be broke. Go ahead and understand <laughs> that. When you're teaching them a lifetime sport, I think fishing and golf, if they get education in that when they're younger, that's something that not only they can do with their friends, they can do with their parents. They can yep. do it with their grandparents. Yep. They can teach their kids, they can teach their grandkids. I mean I think, I think you hit it on the head though. It's the sportsmanship, it's the you know, the way they handle themselves, the courtesy to other anglers, boaters, all that stuff. Well, that's like Andrew Vereen when he fished salt. And we know he won that championship. Yep. Classic kid. Andrew would come up there with one fish, whether it was three pounds or one pound, and he showed true sportsmanship. He would come up, he said, Coach, I know you expect us to bring Wait. our fish up. I know you expect us to smile in the pictures. He said, sometimes it's tough. Yep. But I'm going to smile today because I got an opportunity to fish. A lot of kids didn't get that opportunity. Yeah. That's right. I'm guilty. I'm guilty of being that guy. I'm guilty of not wanting to go to scale because I'm embarrassed. Or, or, but been there, done that. I've seen guys lose king mackerel tournaments and ag tournaments because they didn't weigh that little fish. Exactly. Because they were too embarrassed to walk up there. Yep. But then right. the next day they had the big one, and if they had the other one with it, they could have made they a big difference. Yep. Well, I tell you, we're gonna we're gonna talk more about hooked on miracles uh, when Jason gets back uh, with us. Uh, who we may not get him back now because he just passed us <laughs> yeah, he's with done. a rod, so he's yeah. gone fishing. Um, let's talk about salt. Anybody wants to get signed up? You, of course, everybody knows Student Angler League Tournament Trail. It is open to elementary school through high school, correct? One through twelve. Grade one through twelve, um, and it is two tournaments in the fall, two in the spring, in Georgetown. One in Buford, one in Charleston in the fall and spring. That's right. And two inches tournaments coming up next month. Okay. So there you go, folks. And, and it's growing. Best way to find out more information on it and to get their kids involved. Um, saltfishing with two Ts.com. Everything's there. Pretty organized. Yeah, it is very, very organized. Not pretty organized. It's very organized. And um, we got some new sponsors this year. And um, one we talked about earlier, we hope that'll, that'll, that'll work out. That's going to be a big shot in the arm. Yep. It's going to be like a liquid IV. Wonderful. <laughs> well, but it, um, Timeless Mortgage, Nathan Landers, um, he came on board. Yep. Nathan I was here Skyler. that day. Nathan's bringing Skylar this morning for today's event. Well, it, it's, it's, it's wonderful. It's a great group. And I'm going to tell you the text that I got last night, which I've already shared with you, or why – I love being involved in it, love promoting it, love doing whatever we can for it. But Cody Wilder. Um, who, that was Cody you were texting me. That was Cody. I didn't know who that, that was, was. That was a text from Cody. So wow, wonderful. When, when we were here, when we did the show for national championships, downtown Georgetown, the coach from Montebello uh, came over and sat with us and did the show with us. And let me tell you, if you remember that show, this school lives bass fishing. All right? They do. They got scholarships. They got, they got a, they got a housing off campus that includes thirteen bays. Wow! For bass boats, oh, indoor cow. storage. Okay. They the coach called Cody to set up a tour for him to come visit no and way. tour. Good for him, dude. If that ain't, yep. I mean, that right there alone, 
made, made my week. Yeah. And, uh, made a lot more than that. He just made me kid. feel a whole lot better. But, <laughs> but that is the thing. Like, people need, kids need to understand, the parents need to understand. There are opportunities to go to that next level of education and go to that next level, go to college, uh, and, and to go fishing. I don't think anyone I mean, are you kidding that. me? Yeah. I, I know. Who's the it, other one? Uh, Erskine? Yeah, Erskine. They, they have huge, an entire fishing team. Huge. I took a, uh, it was a girl, actually, and her dad. Yep. I took them out on a charter, and they explained the whole process, and I was like, that is amazing. Yep. I mean, I can get a free boat. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <laughs> I mean, it is crazy. And, and, and South, Clint, the Savannah Art. Savannah Design. School of Arts and Design yeah. is getting big there. Yeah. Um, I tried to get uh, Krista Edmonds to go down there. Yep. You know, the Redfish Queen, because she's an artist. She loves art. And I tried to get her to go down there, but. Well, where's she we got going? our first salt grandkid now. Yada, yeah. yada, yada. Oh, good. That's the first salt grandkid, isn't it? Yep. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. Well, you mentioned Andrew, and by the way, Andrew's turned into an incredible person um, and fisherman. Andrew now works with Merle's Inlet um, Fire and Rescue. Really? Mm -hmm. Yep. So yep. something we're going to do with Salt this fall with Fellowship of Christian Athletes is we're going to have some outdoor huddles where it's going to kind of be like a fishing seminar. Right. Where we'll do, we're we going to do three in the fall, three in the spring, two in Conway in the fall, one in Georgetown. And... My man, this is the, the the best speaker you could have is sitting right beside me, Captain Fred Roy. Absolutely. So I what we're going to do, we're going to bring him in to the rock and talk to him about Jesus Christ for a little bit, not long, just a you know short introduction, and then we're going to break out and kind of have seminars, you know, 30-minute seminar, and then we're going to feed everybody, have some snacks and fellowship at the end, and people that, you know, so... I'm excited about that. That's perfect. That's going to that's gonna be on a Sunday afternoon from like 2 to 3. It'll be user-friendly. You know, most people that <clears throat> they want to get them to go fishing Sunday or get them to go to church Sunday, they still can come in the afternoon. But we're going to try to get into the schools. Um, with Horry County Schools, they told me I could go through FCA and talk. I'm going to target the middle schools. Right. What's FCA? Oh, I got you. Okay, Christian yeah. Okay. They told me I could target the middle schools. So if we can get them to come to the huddle, and the huddle's not about salt. The huddle's about becoming more educated in the gospel of Jesus and in fishing. Fishing, yep. And then also, during that time, I'm hoping that we can get some kids to take a leadership class. That way, they can start at their schools their own kind of an outdoor huddle. Yep. And it doesn't always have to be fishing. It could be hunting. You know, FCA has the big outdoors. What Fellowship Christian Athletes has done, instead of just having a, a, a club at the school, they're pushing sports. So you know your friend Lucas Williams, he's helped with the basketball team down there in Georgetown. Yep. So they're trying to get into the sports. And that's why FCA and Salt are partnered. I mean, I'm the fishing rep for FCA on the coast, but I'm also the director for Salt. So it's right. kind of together. It's separate but together. Well. But that, I wanted to, you know, talk about that. That's something that first huddles in, in September in Conway at the Rock. Well, yeah. if, you, if you turn on any news station, and watch it for 10 minutes, no, you get the you'll realize <laughs> that we need a lot of Jesus yeah. in this world. <laughs> Amen, Amen, brother. For real. Amen. And you're on the Gator 107.9, brother. If you don't think you can talk Jesus right here, you're on the wrong station. That's yeah. why I love being here. It, you're more than welcome to talk Jesus on this station. And uh, if you listen to Adam, Jeff, or any of the other guys, you know where we all stand. Um, anyway, with that being said, real quick, we are going to go to break again. Jenna, if you'll get a break cranked up, we're going to get Raber and let him go get ready. He's got about 10 minutes for his kids show up, and we've got a couple guys fishing, so we'll get a fishing report from them. But I do want to come back and talk to Fred a little bit more, and we're going to sit here and talk to Chris. And our the one and only, I, what I call her, the fishing reporter, the fishing, I came up with a good nickname for her. <laughs> Adriana is here from WBTW, our reporter who is, uh, we're, 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 we're putting her to the task of keeping all the fishing news out there for people to see and like uh so we're gonna have her sit in with us and talk to her a little bit i want y'all to hear about her flounder she caught the other day have yeah. you heard yet no okay good you'll get to hear about it perfect all right well we're gonna go to break jenna are you ready yep all right y'all this is trilogy outdoors radio show we're coming to you live here on the gator 107.9 every saturday morning from 8 to 10 all right y'all 
We're back. It's Trilogy Outdoors Radio Show. We're coming to you on the Gator 107.9 live every Saturday morning from 8 to 10. We're coming to you through the Toyota Tundra Studio presented by Sparks Toyota, where the dealer's always in, and by Key West Boats and uh, Marshall's Marina, Blake City, Georgetown, where every day is boat show. And every day. Of every course, day. Monarch Group and our good friends Express Electrical Services. And uh, I want to mention Mr. Stewart Altman from Marshall's Marine, who is going to be recovering for quite a while. Uh, unfortunately, was uh, involved in an accident at work and... Um, had to have a little surgery last week and is going to be quite a while. Have to stay immobile um, for that leg to heal. But he's in our thoughts and prayers. I stopped by and spent an hour and a half with him this week talking to him. And he's in good spirits. Uh, but that man goes 100 miles an hour. He's and he good, works uh, every day. He's a good guy, too. And yep. he is he is now stuck at home. But he's got an elevator in that house. And we're going <laughs> to figure out a way. He ain't going to last eight weeks, I can tell you that. No, no. no Scotty and I have already talked about it. We're going to have to rig up something that we can get him to Marshalls. Because, I mean, <laughs> that's his that's his life. And it has been for years. And, and he's incredible. But, Stuart, we're uh, thinking about you and, and Miss Joan, who is uh, having to play nurse for you. But now we've got Chris, we've got Brad here, and uh, whoever else wants to grab the mic there. Um, but we are going. We are sitting here, and 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 real quick, we want to talk about the Spanish der- uh, Spanish tournament, the world world championship. World championship. And I'll tell you what. So there is another Spanish tournament that self proclaimed the biggest Spanish tournament in the world. In the world, really. I looked at it. They held it in June. Uh-huh. It's in North Carolina. All right. They had 37 boats. That's it? We have not had that few of boats in one yet. Yeah. So, but it is coming up. Maybe August it's maybe it's, the, maybe it's the biggest on the planet, not in the world. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Okay. You're right. Well, our good buddy Scott Todd I'll go with you. at Father and Son's Welding Services has gone to work and is creating a, another one-of-a-kind trophy awesome. for first place. Uh Importantly, five thousand dollars guaranteed for first minimum. Minimum. We got some things in the works uh, with Captain Sean Bond over at um, Crazy Sister Marina helping me. We've got some good things in the works for it. But Fred, I think, is now officially going to be our waymaster once again. Official. And the new deal is it's going to be the twenty fourth and fifth Saturday, Sunday. Optional of either day. You choose your day. Okay. I had a lot of people ask, can we pay two entries? Okay, here's the deal, and this is we're only doing this is the deal. Yes, you can pay two entries. You're gonna fish one boat can only fish one day. All right. So in other words, Chris has got three boats. Yep. He can fish on two different boats and pay two entries and fish, yes. But you cannot fish the same one, boat. The same boat. Um, and I do think that that will add entries. Yes, it will. It'll bring yeah. more people to the yeah. tournament. That's great. That's what we want. Um, but it's going to be a, a, a great time. We don't have anything new yet that we can release as far as the tournament goes, but the raffles will start next week, uh, this week, and we are doing two. We're going to start off with that $100 raffle that we do every year um, where somebody's going to win 5000 and then the tournament gives away 5000 in first place, and then we're going to do another one for $50 um, that is going to go to second. We'll split that money up between second and fifth place. Awesome. Okay, that money will be divided up evenly, yeah. and then you'll have entries that go towards that. So, right. Um, and so it's it got a lot of great things happening, but that is August 24th, 25th. Another thing I want to mention, if you have family that are coming in town and friends that are coming in town, because we've already got three people from out of town that have already booked rooms that are coming. Carl Carson, did y'all get to see Carl down there? Do y'all know Carl? Carl is Spro. He's a uh, uh, Gamakatsu. He's a rep from Charleston. Well, he was at ICAST. Carl's already booked his room, but Brookwood Inn has been so kind. If you call to book a room for that weekend, and all you got to do is give them the code FISH. FISH, you're going to get 15% off that weekend. Nice. Awesome. So, they're yep, they're partnering with us. And if you haven't been down there, there's plenty of room for trailers and boats and everything else. So, it's a perfect, and, perfect. And park at your door. And park right at your door. <laughs> That's right. The old motor in, you yeah, know. Yeah, I mean, which is nice. I mean. Especially if you've got all your fishing gear and you need to unload. No yep. elevators, no lobby. Just open your door and walk in. So a, a real interesting fact about Brookwood is it is on South Carolina's list of historical landmarks. Wow. Cool, I did not know that. I didn't either. Nice. Yeah, that's really cool. So um, thank you, Julie and Rob, down at, at uh, Brookwood for partnering up with us. But thank you to Sean and Crazy Sister Marina for once again um, you know, giving us a great platform Hosting to hold the it, tournament. Yeah. And uh, we're hoping that we get this way in on Saturday and Sunday. Huge. We want gallery out there, crowds out there, um, having fun, cheering on all our anglers when they come in. And uh, once again, you know, one rule that is t- 
typically stuck with that tournament and will continue to stick is that it's not a you know fish from six in the morning five thirty in the morning till five at night uh we are going to use our kid friendly day uh that we normally do and it is probably going to be i think we do normally eight in eight o'clock lines in yeah. right yeah eight o'clock yeah, lines in you can hit the ocean at seven um eight o'clock lines in and then the scales will close at four Okay. And that's typically when it's been. Right. I think it's been three in the past. Uh, uh, last year we went remember, to four. Yeah, I think so, it was last year till four. Yeah, so we're going to do four, uh, but that gives you a fair a fair time during the day to fish, but it also doesn't keep you out there killing the kids. You know? right. well, that's right. For clarification, yeah, you you got captain's choice on your boat. So if you if you have a single entry. Yep. You got Captain's Choice fish either day. Either day. But if you want, you can buy two entries fish both Both days. days. On a different different boat each day. You cannot fish the same boat. You cannot fish the same boat. Nope. Yep. I know. I'm just... But I know. I agree. I figured if it. I agree. I figured if it confused somebody simple like me, it'd probably confuse somebody else. Well, yeah, no, well, it's, it's right well, here, right? Let me tell you, I'm play the devil's advocate. It's crazy, sister. I'm, I'm play the devil's advocate real quick because my wife already did. She's like, <laughs> "Who's going to know if certain people fish their boat twice?" And I'm like, "Well, we all know each other." Yeah, oh, absolutely. For the most part, and the ones that are coming into town, um, I, I mean, I, I know who most of them are, and. I it's, mean, it's self policing because self-policing. other anglers are going to know. Yeah. So last no. year, the Pathfinder fished both days. Exactly. So, Jimmy. Y'all t- switched teams. Well, Jimmy and his family, yep. they fished it the first day, and then Caleb, Seth, and myself fished it day two. All right. So, that was how so we. So, you've just brought up. Yeah, yeah, they weren't on the now, same boat. Now, you've just brought up a point <laughs> where I want to. Not stick to that <laughs> because then you're all right. We're going to talk about it. What, I mean, we're going to no, we're going to table that discussion. Yeah, that's yeah, a great yeah. Point. We're going to table that. But that, that, that was discussion. how we did it last year. It was the yep. same boat because live well space and yellowfin you. doesn't have trim tabs. Okay, yeah. So. You're, you're, we're going to table that discussion. We're going to table that discussion for now. <laughs> so let me tell you why we're going to table that discussion is because um, you, you brought up a great point, and if it involves the fact that it's going to cost us a team because somebody doesn't have a boat where they can fish that boat. All right, we'll we'll work. <laughs> as long as there's different crew on, on that boat, that's... <laughs> that thing is good. <laughs> we're, we're gonna, it got me the first gonna, time. I know. We're gonna, we're gonna table that discussion. All right. So we we we'll, that that's great points, man. That's great points. All right. You want some fishing report? Yeah, I want some fishing reports from you, and then we're gonna let Tommy do some talking about what's been going on with DNR lately, and and let's talk about safety on the water. And I haven't heard much about any craziness on the water it's been pretty pretty relaxed knock on wood we've made it through the holidays pretty relaxed i mean there's been some minor stuff here and there but nothing like we've seen in the past years everybody seems to be educated nowadays or more educated than more and you know they're, they're starting to you know we have people especially those that are not from here they're still not paying attention to the wake zones and that's something that that's gonna probably, happen they're not, yeah that's gonna happen gonna they're happen. not used to seeing the buoys or the signs or whatever yeah. but you know it hasn't been as crazy. I know this is the last week um, for our new hire classes. They'll be getting done with um, their training. So we hired a class in January. Those guys and gals are going to be going to their field training after Friday this week. Um, so you'll start to see some new faces around the state, you know, around obviously around here. There's some officers coming here. Yep. Some and ride-alongs we- this week, too. Huh? I've seen some ride-alongs this week. It, it, it looked like, you know, normally where it's just one guy in one of the giant boats, there's been two. Yeah, yeah, they've been, they've been, um, they, you know, generally we try when we got on the boat, and Fred was talking about this earlier, about, a, you know, a situation we had talked about. We try to double up everything yeah. we can. I mean, it's safer that way. I don't blame you. Um, the May class that we got hired on, those those faces, you know, Georgetown's getting two out of that class, um, or he's getting one. So... Those guys are going to start the police academy side of their training, so they'll you know they'll be out in uh, Novemberish time frame. But they're all doing really well, you know. It's, it's, it's watching these these folks come from you know no experience and build up to what they are now. They they are it, it is pretty funny to watch them though sometimes. But at the end of the day, they're all doing a great job. The classes mesh really well, and um, you know you brought something up. I know that you had asked me about the. The sh- I call them the shellfish police, but right. <laughs> th- those guys, it, those men and women, those guys regulate the the shellfish, 
And so they do water samples too. That's probably what you saw. And I showed you a picture of a uniform. You right. said that's what it looked like. So well, I, I saw a guy and coming out of Debbie Do in a John boat was he did not have DNR apparel on. He, nope. he, he was not he dressed. He wears a weird outfit. Yeah. yeah and in shorts as well. I was like, blue shorts, but he was carrying a Glock. Now they're through D Heck, right? Yeah. So, yeah, as you know, D Heck separated. So it's no longer D Heck, but I, I don't know the exact name. I want to say it's the Department of Environmental Services. I think that's what it's called. Yep. So those guys and gals transitioned over to that department. So nothing's changed with their job. They're still regulating the, the shellfish, shellfish product. They're doing the water sampling. And, you know, they, they do. They do have a, a, a job that needs to be done. Right. Um, you know, we don't want something getting into our restaurants and getting people sick and yeah, getting the going home. They were there exactly. You know? So that's what those guys do, and and they are they are kind of few and far between. So yeah. Um, I don't know how many they have in the area now, but I know it used to be like three or four of them. It was it was just unusual, and I and my first reaction was that's DNR, but then I didn't recognize him, and I know all the officers down my way and didn't recognize him number one number two he wasn't dressed properly but yet he had a glock so i knew he was law enforcement i just couldn't figure out who yeah. he was yeah so you know in dnr officers they enforce the same things that these shellfish law enforcement guys enforce you don't think that the dnr can't yeah. enforce so, so we, we do it's just, that is, yeah. yeah that's their forte that's what they concentrate on so they they do have a job that needs to be done again they don't we don't want something to get into our restaurants and, and get people sick and you know the water sampling i don't know much about it but i know that you know when they close off shellfish beds and stuff there's a reason why it's not because yeah. they're being mean there's there's something wrong with the water quality yeah uh but no, I mean we we um it's been a it's been a from from you know it's been a lot calmer that that in my personal opinion than it has been for the last couple of years. But you know we're still in the middle of summer. That's right. Um, you know, and and I think we've had a lot of rain over the last week, so this probably cut down a lot of the boating. We needed it. Oh yeah, we needed it. We Absolutely needed it bad. We did. I, I wonder what the little PD's looking like right now. I don't know if it's. I don't know. I, I, I bet you can't get but halfway across it now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, I hope I hope the the clouds are out for the day, and uh, we can hopefully enjoy a weekend without rain. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's been playing havoc on charters. I know that it is uh, for me. Go yeah. out, come back. Go out, come, come back. back. Well, All right, we're not going out anymore. Yeah. Go home. The, yep. <laughs> the disadvantage is I've got a minimum twenty minute run. Yes. And I've got to dodge in some routes that. And it's open water too. Well, I ended up on Monday. We were on fish, catching them, and here it comes, and it's booming and cracking, and I'm seeing bolts, and I'm like, and when Yawkey got covered up, I was on the bay. When Yawkey got covered up, I said, all right, we're heading north. Well, just so that my anglers were staying in Debbie Dew, but, <laughs> but I'd left from Georgetown. So I said, we're headed towards Debbie Dew, and I had some spots over there, so we'll go over there and fish. Well, when I, when I got over there, I was like, I have, teen- oh, no. I have teenagers oh, no. on the boat. I said, call your dad, tell him to meet us at the WD no, ramp. going to pick you up. So, anyway, that's what happened. And um, he says, you want to ride back to your trailer? I said, man, they'll charge me a fee to get back and pull my boat out. And he goes, I got the fee. So, I drove back to Georgetown. It was pouring down the rain. <laughs> I mean, just gully washing. Got back to WD with my truck, got to the guard shack. And the sweet lady at the gate made an, evac- an executive decision. It did not charge me to go in, and hopefully I didn't get her in trouble. But yeah. um, it was dangerous. It was a dangerous situation, and uh, I think it was a it was a nice thing for her to do for us. But yet, I think it was warranted as well. But we were on the fish, which was also made it hard to leave too. I'm Who called a fish? Who got one? Who got a fish? Who got a fish? Or is that the charter coming in? That's kids. Yeah, it might be the charter coming in. Nope, one of the kids got a fish. What uh? What's the water look like down there? Um, the bay actually, is, Muddy Bay has been pretty clear. Um, with this rain, that's going to change. So it, we, it depends on what's coming down the river. Yeah, it's it's been weird here because it's been dirtier than it has been. Y'all even always, with no rain, even with no rain, yeah. y'all and, always and clear. no wind. Y- y'all are always clear, and I'm always muddy. So that's why I was curious it, if it and, was different down there than what it's been here. And Muddy Bay was actually pretty clear, hmm. unusually yep. clear, but um. The red fishing has been good. We've been caught a couple of twenty pounders and up in the grass and three foot of water and mm. and some That's bigger fun. ones, you know, over thirty inches. And then uh, 
sitting there watching the tarpon banging up as well. Oh, yeah. Um, we're not seeing as many schools of the bigger mullets, but if you find the bigger mullets, um, they've got company. Yeah. You know, I believe it. Yeah, I mean, I watch one 100 pounds eat. Speaking of that, I mean, there are a few spots left if you want to go down to Charleston again. The Holy City Tarpon Tournament is uh, next month. Is it really? We're down by Marshware. Yeah. Is it? When is it? Uh, Probably the 24th and 25th. Yeah. No, it is not. Nope, it is not. It's before that. I think it's uh, right after when we're over there. I think it's that next weekend. So it's the... That's Labor Day. 7th, 8th. No. The 10th. Yes. Uh, is, 10th. Is that that's, what, per that's perfect. Because the following week is the... Um, it is the 9th and 10th. It's the 9th and 10th? Two days. It's two, oh, wow. Two fish days. Well, I won't be Do you doing fish it. in Charleston, or can you fish? You, you, you only have to launch a boat from a Charleston landing. You can go anywhere. Oh. You got enough fuel to go to Hilton Head or wherever you can. Interesting. Yeah. So, wow, that's a good, good tournament. In case well, you I mean, try McClure. something different. So I heard, well, I, I heard from McClure, I, I guess uh, some of those guys went to Georgetown Monday or Tuesday morning before that rain ran them back. Yep. Um, and I heard that the water, I heard it was very full of life out there. I believe it. Um, saw some kings, sky, and mm -hmm. caught one, or I guess Justin caught one somewhere 24, 25 pounds. They're um, out there today. They are? They're yep. down there again today? Uh, yes. Yes, maybe. <laughs> well, might be. they might see some tournament boats. <laughs> Wouldn't uh, shock me. They might see some tournament boats, but, you know, like I was told last week, if you're not going, or two days ago by Brent McMullen, if he was fishing in this weekend in South Carolina, he would not stop until he hit 150 foot of water. I believe it. Well, um, and that was what I was kind of telling you. Yep. You know, 65 to 85 foot. Of, yep. I, I mean. You know where we ended up getting our bite? 65 foot of water. Yeah. That's where we got our first two bites. Yeah, that's, I mean, this time of year, hot as it is. And Did you catch a uh, American Red on the downrigger? No. No? No. Nope. Figured you would. No. Nope. <laughs> I didn't, but I didn't get the. Um, I know other people that did. Oh, I know a lot of people that did. I've heard some big ones. Somebody had a uh, thirty pounder. <laughs> Jimmy had the fish of his life. Really? On, On a downrigger. Down yep. Wow. Yep. Yeah, they, and that, they're protected in that deeper water this time of year. I mean, you got to go. I mean, even the surface temps one thing, but yeah. you get in the deeper water, they can get a little more comfortable. Mm -hmm. I mean, we fished in Florida; it'd be eighty something degree water, but the kings would be in the seventy six degree water, right, closer to the beach. Yep. So, uh, and, and you getting you getting rung up, aren't you? Maybe somebody's listening to the radio. Yep, they're <laughs> calling for a trip, <laughs> trying to book uh, a trip with you. And that that's you know talking about that North Carolina fishery, Chris. You caught a big fish up there. It's amazing. Um, but they temperature break. It's all about the temperature. It break. is. It is, and it changes. Yep. So the first boat that finds it, <laughs> it's the, that's the lucky person. They're, no they're doubt lucky. about it. Yep. And, and you know, I think having that subscription for oh. a satellite. Pays off. Pays off up there. If, you, did, if it, you're going to be serious, you know, no different than no, live right. scope and all yep. that stuff. You, you have to have that. Or have a good friend that has it and will share it. Yeah. That, that shares that shares an accurate temperature That's reading. Right. Well, not, yes. I'll not give, one from two days ago. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you an example, a perfect example, is that Greg and I and, and Ronnie, we won a tournament in Miami. And I'd been studying the water temps, and up north where the hooks back, there was mid-70s degree water, but the Gulf Stream where it hits the kink in Florida was run starts to run offshore. Mm -hmm. Well, that water's in the 80s. The water between the stream and the bank was mid-70s. Like, that's where we need to be. And guess what? That's where they were. Did you yep. guys use Roths back then? or Yeah. What you use? Yeah, yeah, that's what I figured. And, I, and, I, and then I used to watch it for the, for the tuna guys, too, when it hits Georgetown Hall. And that was usually on tax day on April 15th. Got water would come up over Georgetown Hall, the yellow fins would show up. Yeah. I mean, bam, it was like. So that, that's another thing that I noticed. So you remember, what was it, two years ago when all the yellow fins? The yellow fins were showing up. So did you ever hear the science behind what they why they were doing it and no. stuff? So a lot of the, the guys that I talked to, the sandstorms. Yeah. It was bringing nutrient. Off of Africa. It was blur. Yep. Nutrient-enriched water was making its way to our coast. It's happening right now. Right. The They're talking about it. On holding the up, holding so up the hurricane. I'm, I'm very curious that if in the next couple of weeks the guys that go out there, if they don't come back with a bunch. So, so what Chris is talking about is, you know, you, you'll hear 
Piotrowski from time to time talking about an African uh, sandstorm or right. whatever that's coming off the coast and why we have like zero chance of any tropical uh, right. formation. Right. Because of the sand, yeah. Because yeah. of that. And it makes its way over here. Like That's it. Remember that at one point last year, I think it was, when the sky color was yes. because of how thick it was. Absolutely. Well, my buddy Danny Payne, who uh, was just calling me on the phone, um, <laughs> Hey Danny! Shout out! He did he did his tours over in in what we refer to as the sandbox. Yep. He says that sand, you know, we think of sand, we think of the beach, right? Right. He says this stuff's like talcum powder. It's in everything. It, he says everything you have is constantly inside. Doesn't yeah. matter. It's constantly covered with his powder, and that's what we would call that sand moving over. But it's basically powder up in the atmosphere. And they yep. said this week we had no chance of any hurricane formation because of all the, all the sand, all the dust moving. Well, wow. Well, I'll we'll see what, how it affects the fish. I, I, I'm going to be curious because that's how it was last time. Could so, be. I, who knows? A little we, fun fact. We've been talking a lot about fish and the kings and, like, the numbers are down. And it, the thing, it, it, and I, I had a king fish a long time, but it's like any other fish. I, one year, one year is, uh, you all made a comment earlier that the fishing in the inlet's been as good as any year, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. But then the kingfish is not so good. Right. Um, so one year is not a good barometer on what's nope. going on, and hopefully the government won't make decisions based on a year. Yep. And it's, 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 it needs to be more of a trend than it is a reaction to what happens in one year. And like we were talking before, you know, it's almost like that uh, beach to 20 miles is, is slow right now. Right. But you get out further, you know, you can get it, – it's more productive I, out there. Well, in the spring with the kings, when the water starts to warm up, it'll be warm offshore – It'd be warm at the beach, but then there's cold water in the middle. Those fish aren't going to cross that temperate change. They're going to stay offshore. When all that water starts to get an even temperature, right. bam, they come to the beach. So, you know, right now, as hot as it is along the coast, they're going to go ahead out in the deeper water, and this could be it's the, the we just aren't fishing where they are. Right. You know, it could be that simple. So, I mean, it's always, it's always that's why we do it. That's, That's why right. we do it. That's right. They are, hey, listen, I mean, they, they always keep you on your toes, right. and, and you're always having to change and adapt and do everything else, um, you know, to to continue to be productive. And that's why I have nothing but the highest uh, regards for all you charter captains that, that have to get out there and, and every single day try to perform and catch fish. And, and, adjust, and adjust, and sometimes it works. Yeah. I mean, I've floundered fish more this year than I ever have, and I have great success at it. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm not known for the flounder guy. I'm not. Nope. I am not the flounder founder, but yet we found on some nice flounder. Yeah, you're gonna have to change you your change logo. Logo. <laughs> you're gonna have to change that logo. So uh, I can see a I can see a flounder tail yeah. starting to come into that. It's logo. Too, too bad we don't have tail and flounder. Oh, gosh. That would be awesome. So, well, it's funny that you say that because I had my fly fishing trip the other day. I caught more flounder than reds. That was I by ac- that, that was by accident, it, not it, by target. We were targeting the reds, like right. I could see them. And the flounder were underneath them. Nice. Yeah, same thing in, you know, a foot of water. Well, it could be that the reds are stirring the bottom up, and flounder are just taking advantage of the situation. Could yep. be. Maybe they're buddies. Could be. I, I don't <laughs> doubt it. Hey, no. did he? Did the flounder pull on the fly line? Yeah. Then it's uh, yeah. You're I a, mean, fly fishing is fly fishing. You're a hero. <laughs> <laughs> if I could perfect that uh, mullet on a fly, there you go. You're a hero. You're rich. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I saw him after that trip, and he said, "Dude, we killed it." Yeah. And um, you know, again, that fly fishing thing, y'all both offer it. You know, take people to do it. It just seems to me like you've got to, you know. You know how we all are, like, oh, can you play golf? Oh, yeah, I'm really good, yeah. like, like, like a Jason Burton. Oh, yeah, I'm really good. Yeah, that's right. And then they show up, and it's like, oh, boy, I thought you said you were really good. No. Um, no. But What happened? But, what but, happens with your fly guy? The fly guy, like, oh, can you cast? Yeah. All right. So, can you make a double hole? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then they show up, and you you're you're wearing a fly in your ear the first cast. <laughs> Had it. So, what I found is the guys that tell you how skilled they are are the worst. Have none. None. And the guys that are extremely humble are usually the good guys. They're and dropping I, dimes. I said, look, I don't need you to throw seventy feet. I need you to throw thirty foot That's and hit it. a cool whip lid. That's all that I need. I saw. I don't need any more than that. So yep. you know, you don't need to throw. You don't need to dazzle me with an eighty foot cast. No. I need thirty foot 30 accurate. Foot. 
and but it always works out. The guys hey. that are humble yeah. are really good at it. It is. You know, they they won't exaggerate. They won't exaggerate their skills, but they usually have a lot more than they say they do. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. It's been really inter- interesting topics and wonderful topics. And Captain Chris, Captain Fred, it's always wonderful to have you all here. Um, we are going to go to break. We've got to take another break. And we were going to have the one and only Bouncer Smith with us today, Captain Bouncer. Uh, we were actually going to – I was going to try and steal him, and we were going to record a podcast after – but since he's not here, we're going to record one this week. But if you don't know Bouncer, you're you, you're missing out. He yes. is he is a true legend in this sport. Yep. Um, Forgotten more than we'll ever know. Exactly, and and a wonderful storyteller, great storyteller. Keeps uh, I mean, has so many interesting tor- stories to tell. Uh, but he's not going to join us. But we do have some other people here that will join us in the next thirty minutes. So we are going to take one more break here. And uh, come back. And, and don't forget, next week we will be at Crazy Sister Marina once again for part two of our law enforcement officers and first responders appreciation rodeo. Uh, and we do have, I'm not going to give any names out yet, but we do have some really cool guests that are going to be joining us uh, next weekend and uh, have not got that list completely pulled yet. But, uh, Sean, thank you and uh, Crazy Sister for hosting us once again. And, uh we're, gonna, we're looking forward to getting over there, but we're going to go to break real quick, and uh, y'all stay tight. Go get you another coffee, get ready, and uh, we'll come back with some great stories on the other side of this break. This is Trilogy Outdoors Radio Show. We're coming to you live via the Toyota Tundra Studio on Gator 107.9. You're clear. All right, fish heads, welcome back to Trilogy Outdoors Radio Show. We're coming to you live from Jason's big wooden deck here. At MIFC, but coming to you through the Toyota Tundra Studio, presented by Sparks Toyota, where the dealer is always in, and by Marshall's Marine, <laughs> Key West Bus, for Everyday Smoke Show! Oh, every day, boy, you bunch that one up. <laughs> Don't forget Marshall's Marine Key West Boats. All right, here we go. And we're also brought to you by Monarch Roofing, our good friends over there. And uh, Express Electrical Services. And make sure i got these audio levels good. There we go. I had your mic turned up for somebody else, for Rayburn. But Tommy does not need his mic turned up. And neither does our other guest because she's used to being in front of the camera and on air in front of people. And you, you were the anchor last night? Is that what I? I did anchor. Well, for our Fox show, WFXB. Okay. Which show is that? Uh, it is. It's our Fox show. Not so. not the news. Well, no, it is news. It's just we it's do just the Fox Network. We do a Fox show as well. Oh, cool! Yeah, so. That is the voice of Adrienne Lawrence, our Hello. our our buddy, and uh, she's our new fishy reporter. Oh yeah. We, we're gonna we we keep feeding her all the fishing stuff, so she'll cover it for us. Oh, I got a good story coming up this week too. So good. I'm gonna talk well, to Gaddis Brannon. So did you really? Mm-hmm. Okay. What's this one? Oh, you can't talk about it. Can you? Well, the Reds, it has to do with the Red Snapper mm. fishing date, so we're doing a follow up on that. But yeah, love very speaking of Red, topics. Speaking of Red Snapper season, how'd you do? I didn't go fishing. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I don't think anyone did. Like, I would have rather just get kicked in the, between the legs and go out there and that. It was nasty, dude. And, One day. And every year. One day. Every year when it happens, it's always nasty. Um, they and must then I know that. You, they must plan for that. I know. I sent Adriana the information for uh, July, uh, August 11th for the um, SAFMC meeting at Merle's Inlet um, C- Civic Center here. Yes. Talking about Spanish and King Michael, which we mentioned earlier in the show. We can't, I can't wait to hear more about that. Um, uh, Adriana was with us a couple weeks ago when we did our law enforcement um, appreciation and first responder appreciation day. It was awesome. And Such a good had time. you called a flounder ever? No, no. Until that day. And we, I'm telling you, dude, she got, it was 4.2 something. We put it on the scale. Yeah, I think it was like 22, 23 inches. Yep. But that was I was first. That's her first. No, she had already called it. Yeah. That one was my second. Ah. That was her second. She had already caught one that was a throwback, right? It was a, it was yep. a small one. Mm-hmm. Then she called another keeper. Uh, but the most important thing, like Chris and I were talking about earlier, this girl picked up cast, throwing a cast net in like two tries. It was awesome. Yeah. I loved learning it. I mean, it's what, so cool. six foot? Yeah, she threw the six footer. Wow. Yeah. That is amazing. But I'll tell you, again, like the importance of throwing a cast net, I'm, I can't tell you. If you want to, like, learn to throw a cast net, learn to cast a rod accurately, and learn to back a boat trailer down. <laughs> okay, we're still working on that. <laughs> learn to back a boat trailer down. That's something you, that every woman needs to learn. And, and I was sitting at the landing yesterday, and this beautiful couple from North Carolina 
um, who watches my TV show on Let's Fish TV, were talking to me, and she was the one doing the trailer, backing it down, and dude, she nailed it. Like, I was embarrassed to back down beside her because she did it so quick. But power. I mean, it, you know, if, if you can't back the trailer down, what then do you, you can't doing? do the rest of the <laughs> What are you no, doing? <laughs> I, I agree. I agree. So, it, it does take time. You got to think about it. There, you just don't just wake up and just know how to back a trailer. Okay, nope. so you got it. Takes practice. And and the worst is try doing a jet ski trailer. If you can do the jet ski trailer, you can do jet ski else. trailer is the worst. Or a small John boat really? and a yeah. big truck. You can't see the trailer. Oh. oh, it's a nightmare. So it's better to do it with a bigger trailer. Yep, bigger, and it's better to do. Boat. I'll tell you the best tip that I was ever given was from Tony, and we've talked about it on the show before. Is your Low on the steering wheel. Put your hand at the bottom of the steering wheel and use your mirrors. Don't turn around and break your neck. If you use your mirrors, if you're going down and the trailer starts to go this way, you move your bottom hand this way, you move your hand this way with the wheel, and the trailer goes back. You know, there's a... It there's, is awesome. There is a test that, that our new officers have to do. They can't, Before they do anything else... They have they, to learn to do a trailer, to too? trailer. Really? They, they, can't, they can't do anything else. So they It makes sense, though. Back trailer. And then as they get better, and, and there's some people that already know how to do it, then there's a timed course, and you have to back the trailer. Then you have to get the boat off, and then you have to, I mean, it, it is, it's, it's a laundry list of things you have to do, and then you have to go do like a circle and then put it back on the trailer, then hook it back up, and then pull out within a certain amount of time. So before they can do anything else, though, they have to back the trailer because if you can't back the trailer, then, I mean, the you know, with the big billboard here, yep. <laughs> people are going to be laughing. We're going to end up on TikTok, YouTube, oh. Facebook. Oh, yeah. But you talking about that SCDNR logo? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, no doubt about it. So, Inglis, how did you learn? I mean, how old were you when you learned how to back a boat in? You're going to laugh. Okay. 38. 38. So, how'd you oh. learn? 39. I had to learn because uh, my uncle gave me his boat and oh. said, you can use it, but you got to put it in. And so I had to learn. And and I did not at that point in time even have any idea. Nobody showed me. I really just went down there and backed wow. it down, did over the shoulder look, you know, break your neck. And uh, uh, But as soon as Tony got in the truck, I was like, why are you doing all that, dude? Put your hand on the bottom of the steering wheel and just use your mirrors. Side mirrors are so much easier. And, like, in different situations, like in Georgetown, where on the Sampit River, that steep is, yeah. that slope yeah. is so steep, like, if you try to turn around backwards, it's, you literally break your neck because you're leaning like you're in a recliner. Highway 22 uh, to turn is like around. The huh? Johnny Vaught land is like, it's really, really steep. Oh, yeah, the one up in Myrtle? And, yeah, Myrtle? and here's the thing. Oh, yeah. A lot of people don't, don't remember this. I do it like clockwork every time. I don't care if it's, if it's mine or somebody else, but, man, I'll pop that parking brake because it, it happens a, a, a lot. We'll get a call. Hey, my, my car rolled down into the water. Yep, and and it's funny because especially like aluminum trailers or really light trailers, they'll start floating, but the cars in the water. The cars under water. Oh. Yeah. Yep. So. Uh, and then you're on social media. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, Every you're, time, you're a, just you're remember. A Someone's car. recording. Just you. remember, anytime you screw up, you're going to be on social media. Yep. Oh, I mean, yeah. you you will end up on social media. You no will. doubt about it. So um, so are you got the if you got the bug now that you got your your big flounder. I do have the bug. I will say we got off that boat that next day, and I, or I was like, when are we going? <laughs> when are we going again, English? We were going to try and fish the King Michael tournament today, yep. and I had um, – um, we had three – we had uh, McClure, who was uh, recovering from – McClure actually uh, sliced his foot open on oysters, mm. had to have quite a few stitches, and he was off the water for a couple weeks, and – then he had to do some work through the church and had to volunteer and stuff. But we were going to fish today, but the winds were too bad. And yeah. uh, we would have been within sail range, so we could have done a radio show from the boat. Which is really cool, by the way. Which is that fun. That so cool. Which is fun. And we're going to – so in two weeks after our next first responder deal, we're going to do, we're going to do one from the boat. Um, and we got to go – we got to do something. Hopefully the Spanish show up because we definitely got to do that. Tony and I have been talking about that. We've got to – if that's one thing we've got to do – um, from the boat live is chumming for Spanish. 100%. Um, just so people can listen to the excitement. You know, I, but when I had Piotrowski on the boat, I mean, that is one thing. He, he got addicted. He was like, this is so much fun. I mean, well, watching the fish. Dude, dude, when you got a hundred three pound Spanish busting the just water. Just flying through uh, the air. Just, I told you about it. It's crazy. Like a dream. It is so crazy to watch them come up and just annihilate mullet as you're throwing out 15 or 20 at a time to chum and they're just they go nuts yep 
Well, you know, Adriana, real quick, because you and I were talking about your limits of where you go, and and everybody yeah. thinks for WBTW and PD15 and everything else, uh, y'all covered at Georgetown, but you're really kind of confined to here north. Yeah. And there's so many good stories in Georgetown. I mean. And that's the thing is there is, you know, that market line. But, you know, I mean, we're 20 minutes away from here. And there, like you said, there's so many good stories. And there's a lot of, I was just talking to my boss the other day. There are so many stories that happen down here, like the right whales, the red snapper, you know, that affect the entire Grand Strand. Yep. There's just so many captains here that are willing to speak out about it. Not saying people up in, you know, Little River up there aren't, but. You know, so, so, so you, you're does, does the line like stop at the Ori Georgetown line? Is it that is, it's kind it's, of an imaginary line, though? It, I mean, it's right at the county line. So everything when you turn on the news here in Merle's Inlet and south from there, you get Charleston news. Yep. Right. So the Charleston there. I mean, let's not let's not like call it. It is what it is. But yeah. well, I'm a call an Char- eight. They don't come up here. Yeah, Char- you're right. They don't. Charleston is they got their own big stories. Yep. I mean, it's a, they, big, it's a big market. No doubt. Right. Exactly. So. This is like a, a, a donut hole almost, and mm-hmm. and you're right. You've got so many captains, and just like when you're talking about right whales and and the speed limits, yes, and and all that that's coming up. You got a lot. Of, you got a big market here, mm-hmm. and and I'm gonna I'll say it for the, the little river guys, especially those that are that are more inland. Mm-hmm. And that's a long way to go just to get out of Little River, and then they got to get offshore to their fishing holes, and that's yeah, same way here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but then you got to put into it. You think about the cargo ships, right? Do you think any of those cargo ships are going 10 miles an hour? Have you ever seen one? Yeah. They're hauling butt. Yeah. And they, they got to haul butt. They're making money. They're also bringing her, her shoes that she just ordered on Timu. <laughs> They're bringing you the rod and reel that you ordered. That, That's right. You got to get them here in a timely manner. If they got to go 10 miles an hour or under. You got vans. It's ridiculous. Or they don't know how to drive and they lose, or they their, their throttles get stuck. And did you ever see those videos out of Charleston? Where the ship, the throttles got stuck forward. No. And it snapped some of the, uh, around the, where the um, military ships are. Oof. Coming out of the, uh, the North Charleston Terminal. It right. broke some of the concrete structures. It was a oh, big boy. deal. But the runaway ship is what they called it. They, they were worried about what happened. Worried about the same situation happening, I think it was Baltimore. Mm. Where the, yeah. the ship hit yep. the bridge. So, but they do move fast. I think, you know, seven, people don't understand. If you've got a 900 foot long ship at 17 knots. They have no idea that that boat's going 17 to 20 no. knots. And, that, it, and it takes a long time. You've got to be able to go. I mean, it's it, it's money and stuff, and you're transporting, exporting, yep. and I mean, look at How like, about cruise ships? The, you, the, the, you don't the stop sets. them. It, you don't stop them within a half a mile, much less on no. the time. You got that. Like, our guys right here, the new inlet and all that. I mean, still, that's that's a long way to those grounds out there. Yep. If you're going to go on a on a Gulf Stream trip. I'm going to tell you, Robert was ticketed via a satellite responder that was in the New Inlet Princess. AIS. Mm-hmm. That you, you knew the story, right? Yep. Yeah. He got a ticket because of that. What and that's what they want to do to commercial boats. They want to. They'll put a responder in. They'll, they'll put a, a a beacon, beacon, beacon or something in the boat that will. They can track, and, and that, they will. And that begs the question. I mean, now for boats that don't have that, if this goes into effect, because I think it's supposed to final rules coming in November. What is? Are these boats supposed to all get that? You know, how much is? How much is that going to cost the government? How much do. is that going to cost businesses like Jason? How much is it going to cost voters? And if voters? he gets bigger boats, and what is the limit? Do you know what the, 30 the, foot, right? 35. 30, 32. 35? It's 30, 35 to 65, I right, believe. Right, right, 35. So, right. I mean, still, some of these smaller businesses and or, or one one owner business have the big support fishers, and that's their that's their livelihood. Yep. But it is it is a little rough. I can see that. I mean, I mean, you get a ticket on the highway for speed. Now you're going to get a ticket on the water for speed. Hey, so for those that might not know what we're talking about, real quick, is uh, that South Atlantic Fisheries Management Council and NOAA have proposed a uh, right well speed limit that will be 10 miles an hour mm-hmm. max, and, not- and it will run from January through April. Oh, gosh. Or the end of April or end of May or something we'll along those lines. Just like March four and a half April. months, right? It's a but few months. During the migration period. But it's their migration period. And there are less than 330 right wells in existence. Mm-hmm. Give or take. So you are slowing down all of that commercial traffic for 300, give or take, 30. 
And when was the last documented well, boat right whale incident? I bet she does. I don't know, but I do know that they said, I want to say it's since 2008, they said five of the 12 documented right whale deaths have been from boats less than 65. Now we're taking a picture right now. Or a video. Hey, <laughs> there we go. We've got to get that trilogy Wait. sign in there. Well, all right, so we're taking pictures, sorry. Um, so, <laughs> we got so, distracted. <laughs> well, all I'm going to say is this. So listen to Adriana. She's a, a, a great reporter. Um and our first encounter was over the sailboat thing here where we met and we were talking about that. And then a couple other things that happened that we discussed and she did a great story on. But she absolutely amazed me in the details that she was working on behind a story that were not out in public. And I want to I, I gave her major kudos um, because, you know, like she said, if she reports on something, she's basically putting her name with it. And if she says this is what it was and doesn't back up her story with all the angles that could possibly have happened, she opens herself up to be in a bad situation, and she did that. You know, and that goes back, you're exactly right. So we were talking off the air, Mm -hmm. and she made some good points about some other no news stories. You still got to report the facts. So you don't, Absolutely. You just don't get to just make it up. There's no opinion. There's no bias. You know, you have to stick to the facts, and you also have to keep in mind telling each side story because that's, that's right. what it comes down to. You want to have a well-balanced story. That's what they teach you in school. I mean, I've been in this industry for a year now, but one thing that is knocked into your head is you have to balance the story out because right. when you're reporting local news, you are out in the communities. People are seeing you face-to-face all the time every day, And people want to rely on their local news. You can say whatever you want, but I think local news, at least from what I can say, you know, there's there's some integrity to be said. And we we um, we're passionate about like reporting the facts and having well balanced sides. And that's that's what it's all about. I mean, that's why I became a journalist. If you don't, you will get called out. Don't 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 ever second guess. That's the name of the game. And speaking about that, you your dad got you into this, right? You he did. I, was in it. I never, he was a meteorologist on broadcast and I grew up going to the station with him. I never in a million years thought I would be in this industry. I always wanted to be on the digital side back end of it. And then one day I took a broadcast writing class and I fell in love, did a few internships. And then I knew I was like, this is the industry for me. And this is the type of job where you have to, in media, you have to absolutely love it. It is long hours. It you're not, Sometimes yep. you're not working. Most of the time you're not working when you, you're actually working. You got to love it. You have to, uh, do you focus on one particular area? Like I know there's crime reporters and there's mm-hmm. sports reporters and there's like a, just an overall general. Are you yeah. more like an overall, are, are you going to focus on our, our outdoors? I mean, that's, yeah. that's a forte of yours or? It is absolutely. And that was one thing before I picked journalism is I wanted to do environmental. So I wanted to do some kind of environmental thing, but now, I mean, it's just all about the connections that you make. And I mean, I live in Merle's Inlet here and the stories down here, like we talked about are so important, but love anything, government, anything, law, anything, environmental, outdoors, all that kind of stuff. And working with fire rescue, fire departments, police departments, there's the, again, I so, can't stress how many stories there are to be told. So your sister station, I was involved a little bit with your sister station in Charleston. They started a show it was a midday show once a week, and it was called Catch, Cook, uh, Catch, Clean, and Cook with whoever the host was. Um, and the young lady, I, I took her turkey hunting. I cannot remember. She, uh, she has now moved to Florida, but it was a weekly show. It was an awesome show. I can see you doing that, like literally, like. And I think it would be. It, I mean, I think it would go over well here. I can't believe nobody's done it yet. Yeah. But where once a week. You go, you're fishing, you're, uh, say you go with Fred, you're catching reds, um, you're going to have a hard time getting Fred to kill one, but <laughs> you catch one, you come back, you have like a Chef Richard, or you go to a, one of the restaurants and you prepare it and cook it and... Take us through it's all the seasons. Great, exactly. It's a great idea. And it's, uh, you know, it would be a 30-minute show, um, but they were doing that. That was like their midday show on Saturdays yeah. in Char- uh, Charleston, um, and I could see you doing that. Um, but, but, but importantly, I, I know the question he asked you was, you're going to, you know, you, you've got to cover everything here. As yeah. you, I mean, that's your job, cover everything, but yeah. we're going to really work hard. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to work, work hard to corrupt you <laughs> and 
everything that comes up fishing, we're we're all calling Adriana. We're like, all right, so here's the story. Yeah. Um, but that that helps with your job because you need content. Like your job is to find content every single day. I mean, we have to come in with. Think about this, three story pitches every single day. Yep. Monday through Friday, five days a week, you're coming with three story pitches every single day. When you're in, I mean, there's a lot going on here, but sometimes there's days when there's not a lot going on, and you really have to dig for stories wow. each day. So, it's, it is a grind. So you're constantly on social media looking to see what's out there. I mean, I love Facebook. And you're constantly working when you're not working. I mean, I work sometimes two hours before I get in, you know, clock that, but it's so, you so got to love it. I just want to follow up from what we were started talking about. Your imaginary line is here, but where, does, where do you minutes, go north? Guys. Okay. We're How far north and west do you go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we Papa go inland because yeah. you're Florence. You guys are Florence, right? Yeah, so yeah. we have. We actually started in Florence. I mean, we're coming yep. up on our 70 years this year. We're the legacy station in this market, which is awesome. One of the reasons why I chose this station. But anyways, we go up to Little River, that that uh, North Carolina, South Carolina state border, and then I mean, we go all the way out to Bennettsville, out to that area, oh, so wow. to the state line up there, and then Florence, and then I think it, yeah, it drops down around Marion, and then. Or Georgetown County line. So we've got a pretty big, pretty big market. Yeah, you here. do. Yeah, you do. You, you guys have a big market. It's a lot to cover, a lot to, a lot to cover. And one thing I'll challenge any reporter to do is don't always concentrate on negatives. Yeah. And there's too much of that. I'm, I, you heard me earlier say about how much Jesus we need in our <laughs> lives now. And it's when you flip on that media, when you flip on that WBTW, PD15, uh, WMBF, I don't want to leave anybody out. When you flip it on and all you watch is negative, 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 it gets old. Well, I'm, I'm glad yeah. you said what you said earlier. You, you, you actually go to, I would say, the trouble to make sure you're getting both sides of both sides. That, 100%. Yep. that story. And if, they may be vastly different, and we know that. Yeah. But at least somebody is not one way about a particular issue exactly good bad and different that matter at least you're, yep. you at least i and i appreciate you saying that to mm -hmm. make sure you're getting both sides of that that makes it you know especially in our day and age yeah so whether like i said good bad but you know you do you have a tough job and, and you do got to do a lot of research on your stories and so and you're and, and i i would imagine with some keyboard pirates that you see a lot of opinions so sometimes yeah you can you imagine how much work that's going to be to to decipher What's accurate, what's not? Tony will tell you one of my biggest fears, not fears, but one of the biggest things that I hate about YouTube um, and putting videos up is that you know for every five people that make a positive comment or enjoy it, there's going to be that one that no matter what, they're going to find something to beat you up on. Mm -hmm. And that's their daily job is to try to make other people miserable. Miserable. And and they just love keyboard warriors. That's it. Like, you'll never meet these people. You'll never meet them. And most of the time, most of them don't even go out in public. No. But all they want to do is go through and look, and they're going to find something and just beat it up, you know? And I do think there are some people who do offer. I mean, we get a lot of emails and stuff constantly. And there are a lot of people who do offer really good constructive feedback. A lot of people being like, hey, I think this story could have been done better. But, of course, there is always the people that, you know, just want to say things. And it's maybe not the most constructive. But there also we do try to always take in that feedback. And it's like, okay, what, what can we do better next time? But Never draw a line in the sand. But listen to both sides and, and, and keep your opinion, yep, biasness out of it. That, I mean, just <laughs> that's yeah. the truth. Everybody's welcome their opinions, but once you hit the public eye, if you say you agree with this one or that one, you're going to get hit hard. It, mm -hmm. Somebody's going to disagree with it. And All right, so let's talk about the week ahead real quick. Don't go anywhere, Adriana, but real, real quick, the week ahead, uh, Ooh, weather. Weather looks incredible for the week, finally. Mm -hmm. And you heard Captain Chris say it earlier. Weather looks incredible this week. Um, don't forget on Monday afternoons, we're at the Merle's Inlet Public Landing. Uh, a couple more weeks, we've got our Monday afternoon flounder tournament. Uh, you can show up between 5.30 and 6 to get registered, put your boat in the water. Uh, you don't have to bring back the fish alive. You get an 8-ounce deduction for a dead fish, but you can weigh it, okay? You can weigh it. Um, you want to fish tomorrow afternoon? Can you get off work? Oh, yeah, I don't All know right, tomorrow. Tommy, you off tomorrow? You, oh, you're on the road. You're on the road. I know going that. To Clemson. You're on the road. You're going to Clemson. Go Tigers. <laughs> um, yeah, tomorrow afternoon um, at the landing, 6 to 8 o'clock. Great time. Tide is perfect tomorrow afternoon. Monday. No winds. Monday, not 
I mean Monday, sorry. I keep saying it tomorrow. I forget it's Saturday. Thank you, Fred. Monday afternoon. Thanks, Fred. Monday afternoons. Thursday afternoons, don't forget, at Wakawachi, the uh, Big Mouth, ba- uh, the Big big Bass Battle at Wakawachi. <laughs> Hang on. The Big Bass what Battle. Say, the Big Bass Battle at Wakawachi. Uh, Tony and the crew over there. Um, and, again, great weather this week. We're going to be at Crazy Sister next week and having a great time over there with our first responders and law enforcement. If you're off next Saturday, you're more than welcome to come join us again oh, for that yeah. one. Um, we got some really cool guests next week. Uh, Jeff Bitten, your wife, Wendy, is in our prayers. Thoughts um, suffered a minor stroke, as oh, far no. as we know right now. Mm-hmm. Yesterday, uh, you're, you're in our thoughts and prayers, and uh, hope Miss Wendy gets over this quickly and, and gets better. Um, and let's see what else we got. I know there's a lot of prayers we need to give uh, to a lot of different people. Um, but other than that, we're going to get some great information out about the Spanish Micro Tournament coming up in August. And back to school for Georgetown County this week. What is, is it this week or is it for last real? week? No, it's this week, Thursday. Just... My kids are back in school Thursday. Came around out of nowhere. Feels like summer. Somebody Maybe said. I like that. Somebody said to me, do you have a great summer? I said, it feels like it's just starting, and yeah. my kids are going back to school. Yeah. All right, I'm secretly ha- happy, though. Just right, so yeah. you know. All right, <laughs> you, anyway. You've got a busy week. Everybody's yep. got a busy week. It's going to be great weather. Get out there. Come come down and you know, see us on Monday. And we got, you know, Matt's got some stuff going on. Yep, there at Walk and Walk Outfitters. And uh, tomorrow I'm going to be raising money for Luca James. Strongman right. Luca James will be at uh, playing golf out in uh, all 501 at uh, the World Tour. World Tour. All right, y'all, on behalf of Adriana here, our good friend from WBTW, on behalf of Captain Fred, on behalf of Tommy, Mr. Green, Jeans Buchanan, on the Flounder Pounder over there, Captain Jason Burton, Captain Chris Regan of On the Fly Outfitters, Tony the Bassmaster Carter, I am Captain E, and this has been the Trilogy Outdoors Radio Show on the Gator 107.9. Trilogy Outdoors podcast is a product of Trilogy Outdoors Media. All views and opinions of our hosts and guests are not necessarily those of our sponsors. Trilogy Outdoors is produced and edited by Trilogy Outdoors Media. Be sure to follow us on all the podcast platforms as well as our social media pages on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And also, don't forget our other brands, Southern English Radio Show and Walk Em All Outdoor Magazine. To find more information, visit TrilogyOutdoorsMedia.com. And remember, if it's anything dealing with fins, fur, and feathers, you're going to find it right here on Trilogy outdoors.